first of all, I'm going to start with something. Uh, a lot of people, they are obviously, they watch me on a YouTube channel. They watch me on, uh, you know, all over the social media. Uh, just to kind of introduce myself for those who don't know me, my name is Zain Shah and uh, I've been selling online from past 10 years. I started in 2012 and uh, since 2018, I've been selling full time. Before it was on and off, I had a, a job on the side as well, uh, another business on the side as well. But I've been doing this uh, full time from past four years. And uh, when it comes to e-commerce, especially the people who are starting and a lot of people, they ask me this question. And the first question, which I will address here, is it too late to start selling online in 2022? Or if you are watching in a replay in 2023, we are nearly in 2023 as well. And to answer your question, I was uh, looking at my bank statement for last month. Uh, we received around 17 parcels from eBay and Amazon combined, and I am one household living in the UK. Uh, so you can imagine the scale of the demand which is there in the market at the same time. A lot of people say, well, there is a lot of competition, how I'm going to compete with other sellers as well. To be honest with you, I wish I, I as I said, I started in 2012. I wish I started probably, I don't know, maybe as soon as I turned 18 back in 2000 and, you know, earlier 2012 as well. So what happened over the period of time, any business that you're going to go in, it's, it's obviously going to become more competitive, but because of a lot of demand is there. So if you look at eBay and Amazon, a lot of things that we receive every single day, we, we buy stuff from eBay and Amazon every single day. A lot of that stuff is coming from small business owners like me and you at the end of the day. Uh, there are obviously the bigger brand, but uh, the people who have a loyalty with the bigger brands, they are they're going to stick with them. That's that's good. But there is enough share for each and everybody because of uh, for the higher demand as well. Uh, Mariam is inside the chat, Harvard inside the chat. Hi, hi, each and everyone. So happy to see each and everyone right here. Guys, if you have any questions, um, we're going to be answering all of them. So please uh, just put that inside the question sections. There is a particular section called questions. So if you just click on that one, click on ask new question and you will be able to ask from there uh, as well. So little bit of my story if i can talk about uh you know how i started i think that's gonna be really helpful for a lot of people who are looking to get started as well uh because as i said the whole purpose of this uh, master class today is to help you get started and then scale your business if you are in the first uh, year of your business so i've been selling uh on and off uh, on eBay and Amazon since 2012 and everything was pretty good uh, you know little bit of stuff from the local shops like you know retail arbitrage all that kind of stuff as well and uh, one day I was uh, I, I looked online I think it was a Facebook or something there was a, a headphones and they had like a zip in the middle I mean now we have a wireless headphone you know everything is wireless as well uh, but they had a wire and they had like a zip in the middle so with that zip I, I, I found them really really uh, fancy and really really attractive I actually wanted to buy them for myself so I went on eBay I went on Amazon I, I checked there but nobody was actually selling that and I went on I believe it was Aliexpress and I found a seller and uh, that seller sold me 18 pieces of headphone for 30 pound and that's how i started like 30 pound was the first uh investment i should say you know that's i made in my e-commerce business so those headphone came over from china took a couple of weeks and then i kept one for myself because i wanted to buy for myself and then the rest of them i listed it on uh, ebay first i started selling on ebay and within weeks Every single one of them, I sold them for $9.99 each. And I bought them little over one pound. And that gave me confidence. And I said, okay, well, with the retail arbitrage, the things which I'm buying from a local shops, and 
I was always kind of scared. Okay, I need to go to Alibaba and I need to buy like a huge container and I'm going to be spending a lot of money and I don't know is it going to be worth taking that risk at the end of the day or not. So I made a small investment, uh, £30, and that gave me confidence to actually uh, start my whole e-commerce business. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I would say a lot of people we join these webinars, we, we join these uh, e-commerce masterclasses as well. We watch a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, the, the difference and the change you're going to see in your life, I, I, I would say, where you will decide to take action, either it is a small action or a big action, that really going to depend on at what stage you are. But as a beginner, if you're looking to sell on eBay, you're looking to sell on Amazon, the first thing that you can do is to create your account. That's really, really simple things to do. And uh, you can either go for a limited company or you can be a sole trader. Uh, awesome uh, uh, are kindly giving me this platform to speak to you guys as well. They have a, a really, really good offer where they can help you set up your a business registration, form a limited company and give you business account at the same time for little as £12. And actually, if you do it by yourself, that also costs £12 as well. So why not someone who is professional to help you set up your business more professionally? So it's only cost £12. The links will be uh, inside, uh, you know, inside the email uh, for those some as well. A uh, couple of accounting related question, obviously, I, I, I'm waiting for an uh, accountant from Awesome to join me if they are available at the, the backstage, hopefully. Uh, either you can go as a sole trader or you can go as a, a limited company. I wanted to ask more kind of technical question, but the thing is at the end of the day, uh, it, there are obviously pros and cons of being sole trader and there are pros and cons of being a limited company. So if you are... Uh, a sole trader. Good and good uh, afternoon. If you can hear me, we are actually on our <laughs> I can't hear question you. as well. You can hear me. <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear okay, me? Yeah, I've got you. All right. That's. I just. I've got no camera working currently. So uh, the joys of technology. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, that's absolutely fine. I was actually. Uh, I was talking about uh, 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 somebody who wanted to. You know, I, I will put this question towards you because I wanted to ask this to somebody who is obviously accountant at the end of the day. So let's say I want to sell on eBay, I want to sell on Amazon. And uh, I, what, what do you think, what will be the best for me? Either I go as a sole trader or a limited company, or I would actually, what are the pros and cons in between? And first of all, you know, you just join as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming over. If you can start with your introduction and then obviously answer my question, that will be really helpful. <laughs> yeah, no worries at all. So I'm Gordon Scammell. My title, I believe, is quite grand. I'm the UK lead accountant for Awesome. Um, so I manage our team of accountants and my colleague who joins us also is Hussein, who you, can, you guys can probably see there. He is one of our e-commerce accounting experts. And so between us, we're hopeful that we can answer all of your questions. Uh, well, I'm confident that we can. Now, in terms of your question, it's a tricky one to answer in the timescales that we've got. And the things are moving all the time. Because of the budget changes that everybody's aware of, the gap, as it were, the best way to describe this is this. Taxation for a limited company, there's no national insurance contribution. So whatever profit you make, I'll try and keep it very simple. So whatever profit you make in a company, you pay tax on it. Currently, that is a corporation tax the, in the UK of 19%. The budget has already told us that it's going up to 25% next year. So a big increase on your profits as regards to having it as a company. That used to be the major tax saving. We would say be a, be a limited company because it's a lot cheaper. As you all know, as individuals in the UK, 
Although you get a, an amount of £12,500 tax-free, each of us do as, as, as individuals, you pay tax and Nash insurance on any money you make. So if you think about the two lines of profit, you have your sales, you have your expenses, and bottom line, the profit on a company, uh, if it's £10,000 for easy math, we'll say that you've got, just to keep it very simple, £1,900 in tax to pay. With a, As an individual, you've got tax and Nash insurance to pay. So therefore, everybody used to say, OK, best thing, be a limited company. The reality is now that gap is closing between the two. So it is still more viable to be a limited company for the reason that you can have additional benefits and uh, in terms of you can look at pensions, et cetera, et cetera, for getting money out of the business. And the additional thing to bear in mind with profits is, and I'm sorry, there's, there's a lot of numbers I'm hitting you with here, is to get, not only do you pay tax on the profit of your limited company, for you to get it out of your company and into you as an individual, there's a tax implication to that now as well. And that rate is 8.75% currently. So if we go back to the, the, the logic behind why a limited company or why an individual, if you think about your basic rate tax and then your Nash insurance contribution, we're looking at a total of about 33%. We're now saying currently that the, with corporation tax and then personal tax in terms of getting the money out, you're looking at 26.5% currently, so it is still worth doing. When we get the corporation tax increase, there's, it's negligible now in terms of bottom line tax and NI savings. So the reason to join a limited company or uh, so to have a limited company as opposed to a individual is more so about personal liability. There's very little now in way of tax savings. It's more about personal liability. So whether that's answer your question or, on, or not saying I'm not quite sure, but uh, or whether everybody's now got a headache, I do apologize for, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. No, that's that's absolutely answer my question. Uh, so one, when you talk about liabilities, like what kind of liabilities as a sole trader you have to deal with and how limited company actually protect you from those liability. Another prediction I want you to make, I know you can't really say this for sure. Do you think we're going to see the increase of uh, corporation tax up to 25% now or it's going to stay at 20%? It, well, it's, cur it's currently 19%. Uh, sorry, the, the 19, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the raise to 25% will happen after April next year. Okay. So, so it's a given, <laughs> I'm afraid. So, so that, um, sorry, it, sorry, that will be for like, let's say I'm already trading in this particular financial year. So for all that one, I will be in a 25% tax bracket because I need to do my tax return obviously after the April, right? Individual, it depends when your company year end is. Remember, oh, the right. company tax yeah. is based on the financial yeah. year of your company, not tax years of, of the UK. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, in the terms of liabilities, <laughs> what 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 do you think about liabilities as a sole trader or as a limited company? Okay, so as I say, if you set up a, a, a Zane and you're you're a sole trader all on your own. Any liabilities that you have fall at your feet 100%. So if you go and get a line of credit on a supplier, then any outstanding monies that you owe to them is liable to you as an individual. They can come after you however they choose, should it all fall foul, and God forbid that that would happen. But if it were to fall foul, then the liability that you would have would come to you as an individual. So any asset that you have as an individual could be liable for them to claim against. So like I say, if you rack up debt with your suppliers and then uh, you know, uh, uh, things don't go well, then the supplier could be entitled to come after your home if you're in a home car, any asset they might look to do. It. With a limited company, you get the security of that not being the case. There is uh, obviously an, uh, an if, and that is if is as long as you don't secure any liabilities and perform as a director incorrectly, then the debt would just get lost. Apart. If there were any assets in the business, that would be the sum total of what the person would be available would have available to them. Unless, as I say, you put any personal guarantees 
on any monies lent to the company. But in the sure. main, that's why we always say be a limited company because it takes away that an element of that personal liability that might occur should you require a line of credit to get your uh, inventory. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, considering this is also really a huge. Uh, I mean, especially I sell electronics a lot, mobile phone and accessories as well, and uh, accidents happen a lot of time. So with the limited company, it's considered as obviously a separate entity, as you mentioned. So you are protect, protected against, I mean, at least as a person. Uh, as an accountant, you obviously deal with many e-commerce sellers as well. If somebody who is looking to start this business, let's say, you know, they want to be an Amazon seller in 2023 or they want to sell, you know, they want to start selling today. What is the kind of ideal budget for their first product? Um, it, it, it's a difficult one to sort of su suggest that in terms of because I, I think you've got to you've got to look at it about don't run before you can walk is, is, is definitely the thing. You've got to be able to cover off any debt, I would say, initially. I, I think don't overstretch yourself. So you know, I think most people start in this day and age, it seems, with a couple of thousand. But a lot of people, I'll give you a scenario of, of a lot of our clients is probably the easiest way to explain it. And I'm, I'm just to say, I'm sorry, I, I cannot get my camera to work. So I'm not I'm not intentionally avoiding anybody. I cannot get my camera to work. So my sincere You're apologies. You're all good, don't worry. Can't, <laughs> can't see my face as regards to it. So, yeah, so going back to our clients, in the main, I would say most of them put between two and starting from scratch it is an amazon seller two to five grand people tend to put in from their savings and go with that amount as a starter for 10 for seeing what sort of returns they get because the other thing of course is and, and you're you're far more the expert than i am with this saying you've got to find a product that people want there's no going point in finding a product that people don't want and sadly we do have uh, we've had in the past clients that, that that make a wrong call on that and then you're left with dead stock, as, as I say, which is far more your area than it is mine. But yeah, I would say be prudent in your investment because you know if it flies out the door, then you can invest further. You can gauge what's going to happen. Yeah, I was uh, before you joined. I was talking about my first product actually, <laughs> but obviously, uh, it's it's a very uh, I would say a lucky scenario. We can see you now. Oh dear! Yeah, <laughs> I've just seen it popped up. So apologies for that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so I was uh, I, I was talking about uh, 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 there was like a headphone in the middle. Uh, it had, sorry, the headphone they had like a zip in the middle, and it is before like we had these wireless headphones, and I wanted to buy them for myself. So uh, I I just decided to place an order for I say well okay I'm gonna buy one for me why not I mean nobody was selling on eBay and Amazon at that time so I I placed the order uh, for eighteen or nineteen headphone and I I I only spent thirty pound but obviously you know it's not it was only one product but at least it gave me confidence to start my journey you know uh, so. In the terms of like, if somebody is looking to start, but I will say at the end of the day, uh, it is really going to depend on the product. You know, as Gordon mentioned before, the product research is something which is really essential. Uh, you want to go into the product which people want to buy at the end of the day as well. So somebody is looking to start. The first thing I will say, you know, depending on either you are taking a notes inside your mobile phone or you're taking like a pen and paper kind of thing. Uh, sit down and write, I would say, 10 to 15 questions that you need to research. And now in 2022, there is a lot of free resources out there. So first of all, okay, well, we already answered that. What will be the better? Either is a limited company or a sole trader. How I'm going to register my business? How I'm going to open Amazon account? What will be the best product research tool to actually do your product research? Uh, then depending on a product, you can actually decide your budget at the end of the day, how I'm going to list that product on Amazon, how I'm going to run my promotional campaigns on Amazon, how I'm going to fulfill the orders as well. So that's going to be 10 to 15 questions. 
literally in 2022 and that wasn't something when i started it wasn't really widely available you can literally google it you can go on youtube and there are not just my channel and there are tons of other channel have a really uh, good information when it comes to uh, your product research and starting your journey uh, from the scratch as well so coming down to little bit more kind of scaling your business and more towards like a uh, you know somebody who is in the first year of their business uh we have been seeing a lot of supply chains issues and the postage uh from china to uk particularly is really really high do you see these things have got better any or is there any chance these things are going to get better in future <laughs> oh it's a tricky one <laughs> do you want to have a go at that one Hussein? i'll let you as a, an e-commerce expert answer that one yeah, so it is getting it is getting very expensive to ship in your products from overseas. Um, it is going to get better, but everything's getting expensive. So getting better doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go back to the levels that it was at before. It's just going to get yeah. better, and as in how the state of the economy is now. So getting better might be like being the same. Being the same price might be might be like a dream for someone instead of going up more so it's really hard to tell with the economy the way it is now if it if if someone's selling so if they were shipping and the shipping costs were a thousand pound if maintaining a thousand pound would be possible anymore uh, if, if it stays at a thousand pound that might be a blessing but seeing how everything is going it's, it, it looks like it's going to get more expensive but it's not getting expensive necessarily just because it's the shipping costs. It's, it's everything that's happening at the moment, which is contributing to the, to the, to the prices skyrocketing, skyrocketing at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I remember not so long ago, I think before the pandemic, the, the shipment, it's, it's the same shipment that we ordered near the Christmas. Uh, it used to cost me in the terms of shipping i can even talk about figure somewhere between 3000 to 3500 um, i recently paid around 12000 for the same items in the terms of shipping so it's it's a four time higher uh, as compared to two years ago uh, coming back to kind of accounting side of the things as well obviously we are speaking about somebody who is in, in the first year of their business what do you think is the best time to employ someone as an accountant to help you on an accounting and bookkeeping side of the business well i think i think what what my advice is is start as soon as you start because i think it, you, you do need the guidance you do need to understand um what you're actually going into and one of the things we do at awesome is we offer a, an onboarding call when you join us so not only can you get the incorporation done through us so if you're going to go down the limited company route we can we can do all the documentation and set up the limited company for you but also what we do is we have an onboarding call and at the moment they're invariably through me but they can be any of our team of accountants where we'll explain fully the implications of being that limited company and, and why it's worth doing it at the outset because what you don't want to do is miss is miss a trick further down the line you know six months into it it, it, it it can be messy also because obviously if you think about you start trading in six months time you think i better find an accountant whoever that might be doesn't necessarily i'm hoping it's us but it could be anybody but in six months time you've then got to approach somebody and say well i've got six months of records to try and sort out all those things we would put you right on what you need to be looking after in terms of what documentation do you need to keep why you need to keep it but also what you know, something needs to be done with those, with those numbers. We need to be on top of those figures. Otherwise, we're chasing our tails. So it, we, we're not just number crunches. I, I think that's the thing. Why do you have an accountant? Ultimately, because they do more than just give you some number crunches. We're there to give you advice to help you make a success of your business. We're not there to tell you what product to buy, but we're there to help you as best we can with ways to do things efficiently. And I think that's why i would suggest coming to us immediately yeah uh so 
I know you're a busy man. We're a little bit uh, uh, short on time uh, as well. We want to keep it packed into 40 to 45 minutes uh, for this one, for the audience who will watch us in the replay as well. I want to go to the questions that we have from audience as well. And at the end, if you will have any questions for me, uh, you can you can ask me as well. Just I want to uh, quickly address the questions uh, from the from from the chat as well. So I want to start my business on eBay. Need your guidance and support. Mohammed Qasim is asking this question. I will go rapid fire this one, uh, Mohammed Qasim. But I will say. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, you want to start on eBay, you have 10 to 15 questions, how to set up your business, how to open, write all of those questions inside a Word doc or somewhere, and then go and put on a YouTube. If you go on my channel, it is Zen Shah on a YouTube. I have a free playlist on my channel. So it is completely free. You can watch all uh, on a YouTube. It will give you at least a surface level information to start your journey from zero to, you know, all the way becoming a full-time seller. Uh, the next question is uh, let me go from there so hi zen upon checking the training on the setup on ebay account you said as a limited to your office address in own case virtual address as well but but you replied it so these are the other one okay uh all oh, right it's uh, the other but i have started recently selling on ebay it's hard to manage the postage cost how people are selling the things for one pound and offering a free postage as well that's a really good question a, lo a lot of time we see the a very cheap item it doesn't really make any sense how people are selling it as well if you go to their accounts and see how much feedback they have their account it will be really low feedback at the end of the day as well so that might be they are doing something like a loss letter they are trying to bring the traffic over to the store by by just a local shop if we go down in our local shop the the price of milk and bread at the end of the day is going to be really really cheap a lot of corner shops sell those things cost to cost just to bring the customer over as well and if that customer happened to buy a can of coke or a beer or wine you know the, those things have a bigger profit margin as, uh, at the end so those are loss letters not always those guys are making profit but other thing as well you have to keep in mind if you have a business account with the royal maze or every or those kind of stuff as well they also give you discount on the quantity so just to increase quantity you know, you get overall discount on each and everything that you send as well. So it's it's a kind of you have to find a balance uh, between uh, those stuff where you can increase the quantity and get your postage price cheaper overall. Uh, that will be the the things as well. We have a lot more 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 questions. So other one, I'm gonna do this one the last one. Any wholesaler suggestions, please, for Amazon FBA. Uh, the wholesaler is it's it, it is something you know if you're looking to go down in a wholesale route which i don't really recommend to be honest with you as compared to doing a private label because in a private label you will have more control over what you sell and a profit margins as well but going down in a wholesale i think tuffel i don't know if i'm pronouncing that wrong the, those guys with the big fry pans and you know the cooking accessories they are having some new sign ups for amazon uh stuff as well uh, so, Gordon, I hand it over to you if you have anything for me and uh, you can feel free to ask me. Uh, or if you want to wrap it up, uh, that's up to you. Um, I, well, I suppose what can I add to that? I, I would say, I, I think anybody listening that's thinking of doing it, definitely get in touch with ourselves uh, when you've made the commitment to go to um, do your selling appoint an accountant preferably us we'll be able to handhold you through the entire process as i say it, it, it's not just about numbers it's about supporting you and you understanding what you've got to do as part of, you know there, there are legal requirements if you become a limited company and then a director thereof you need to understand exactly what you're signing up for that is part and parcel of what we do as awesome is help you understand what you're going to do what you're required to do we ensure filing is done in a timely manner which is imperative that we get that right um but also you know circumstances are different for a lot of people you know we have a lot of questions or when we're onboarding most people start off as an amazon seller with their currently running with their own 
employment in the background so they do it as a part-time basis and whatever and that's a huge reason as a driver for why to have a limited company if we take that in isolation if you're somebody that earns a salary of 25k a year for example what you don't want to do is then become a sole trader with amazon because you're you've already used up all your allowance your personal allowances with your salary you're paying tax and national insurance anyway you want to separate your other income i.e the amazon income into a limited company where you can have breathing space to work out the most tax efficient way for that then to be reflected back to you and that is exactly why we're here to help you so i would absolutely suggest that anybody thinking of doing this or in its infancy with the business themselves come to us and we can assist you as best we can the other uh, caveat to to add to that is that um we at awesome have actually created uh, our own software system so um we 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 are having a system called awesome accounting which we believe will be a market leader in itself in in doing accountancy processes and all the background uh, reconciliations that are required so we believe our efficiency will be even better than it is now so uh, that's my punch for, for, for us above anybody else in terms of uh, reconciliations and as an accounting firm but uh, yeah i wish everybody all the luck in the world with everything and like i say we're, we're here to support anybody that takes a plunge and, and i take my hat off to those that do it's it's a brave thing to do but it can be very very rewarding as uh, zane is, uh, is 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 a living proof of that yeah i consider myself lucky and also when it comes to obviously these kind kind of things i i would say uh the knowledge is something that you can obviously learn uh a lot of things are you know out there nowadays uh hussein any last words before we finish before we wrap up yeah um with selling it's like like how gordon said this is it's rewarding um by its risky so re- research research feature research, research before you even step into selling and yeah make sure you choose the right products and test the waters before you go all in don't put in all of your money straight away just see see like test with a few products and see if they sell before you go in full time would say yeah that's that's obviously you know you don't want to put all your money inside one product and that end up just sitting there uh you know but i will say as a last word at the end uh i will come back to uh, I, i've been thinking about it a lot as well uh a, a lot of time people ask me like what you actually do and i always like you know i'm a e-commerce seller i'm i sell on amazon i sell on ebay uh i make youtube videos about selling on ebay and amazon as well so a youtube influencer or or a e-commerce seller um a lot of people call me that but to be honest with you i don't think i actually agree with that introduction <laughs> so i invented one word for me i am actually action taker you know uh if i find something if i'm really passionate about that thing uh i'm going to take action and i'm going to do it and obviously there are a lot of risk whenever you are starting something uh life is full of risk as well but that doesn't really mean we stop breathing at the end of day uh at the end of day the bigger the risk is and uh, we should have a courage to take that risk i i believe either we actually learn lesson or we win these are two things will happen at the end of day as well but the people who actually take action they will actually see some kind of difference in their life you know so me as an action taker i'm not going to pretend like money is not the objective obviously i have my bills to pay at the end of day but anything i have done so far you know it is always about taking action even at a small step or at a bigger step that really going to depend on at what level you are we all know what we need you know what how we need to get started as i mentioned a lot of information is out there and how we need to scale our business as well but at the end of the day what holding us back i i would say i'm sorry if some some people will find it offensive it's uh, is our own ability of not taking action and being lazy about it there is no other words to be honest with you 
So, you know, do your research. It is really, really important. But whatever you want to do, just just take action. And uh, again, uh, to Gordon and Hussain, thank you so much for coming over here. And thank you so much for each and everyone in the audience to actually join us today as well. Uh, we should do this again sometime again as well. <laughs> Well, thank you for letting us uh, say our piece. It's it's uh, it's been a pleasure. Cheers, cheers. Thank you so much, guys. Bye, bye.